from Learfield. The Purdue Boilermakers fell to the Iowa Hawkeyes 24-3 last Saturday. With three games left to go in the regular season, Purdue stands at 5-4 and four overall and 3-3 three and three in the Big Ten. The Boilermakers have three games left in the regular season, two of those on the road, including this Saturday when Purdue travels to Illinois to take on the Fighting Illini in Champaign. Noon kickoff Eastern time with our broadcast starting at 11 a.m. Good evening, everybody, from Walk-Ons in West Lafayette. It is the Jeff Brown Show. We're going to be talking with the head coach about Boilermaker football here for the next hour. You can get your questions or calls in tonight at 888-246-2678. You can also watch along with us tonight on Facebook. We're on the Purdue Athletics Facebook site, and we're on the Purdue Football Twitter site as well. A little bit later on in the show, we're going to be talking with senior defensive tackle Lawrence Johnson and offensive guard Marcus Bull will join us later in the program as well. When we come back, we'll have the head coach. It is the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Tracy in motion, O'Connell with time. Touchdown, Purdue! Jones in motion. Quickly to Charlie Jones, scampers to the outside, heading to the pylon. The game now. O'Connell looking over the middle, beautiful throw. Finds his man, touchdown. Flat so he can cut off the safety like that and make a play on the ball. <laughs> O'Connell to throw again, sets his feet, long ball. Jones wide open, touchdown. Ball with his hands, turn and get upfield immediately. Going quickly. He's cutting after he starts with inside the tackle box. O'Connell, what a drive that he has engineered. Going for the corner of the end zone. It's a touchdown for Purdue. O'Connell, surveying. Touchdown catch by Toro. Matchup-wise, today's game, it just makes that much more sense. This ends up being an angle route from your tight end. And haven't seen 87 yet tonight. Third and goal, empty backfield, O'Connell. Over the middle, zips it towards the back of the end zone. That's caught for a touchdown by T.J. Sheffield. O'Connell on the slant, throws a dart. Jones keeps his feet. Jones to the end zone, touchdown, Purdue. Important third down here. And that's caught Sheffield. Sheffield spins free. Sheffield dives, touchdown, Purdue. O'Connell will throw, and it's caught by Jones. Touchdown, Purdue. What a pass. O'Connell on a rollout, looking back to his left. The tight end throw back to Payne Durham for the touchdown. Well executed. Welcome back to the Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. I got Jeff Brown with us. And, uh, Coach, we talked the last couple of weeks before the Wisconsin game and before the Iowa game. These are two teams that you don't want to have to play from behind against. And, unfortunately, that happened in both situations. And, they're awfully tough to come back on because they got great defensive teams and they're playing very efficient offensively. Well, bottom line, we, we didn't play efficient football. We turned the ball over. And uh, when you do that with limited possessions because both teams had outstanding defenses and a sound running game, uh, you're going to be behind the eight ball. And, uh, you know, it was unfortunate. We, we've had good weeks of practice. Um, there's just things we got to learn and improve upon in order to get better to, to find a way to beat some of those teams. You had mentioned last week, and we knew the weather was going to be a little bit difficult on Saturday. We didn't know early in the week whether it was going to be rain, wind, or a combination of both. You were able to practice for the rain, and it rained about, what, two minutes on Saturday. Really hard to simulate 45 and 50-mile-an-hour wind gusts, though, during practice. 
Well, it was. We did practice all week with a wet ball, and we thought we had a good preparation going in. Um, and the wind was was strong, and uh, it was you know it was for both teams. And uh, you know we weren't efficient enough in the passing game. And like I said, uh, you know, um, just a multitude of small things happened that ended up really uh, you know hurting us quite a bit. And I just think that uh, the turnovers uh, early on offense, we had a couple draw. Uh, st- Drive stalled as we got going. I thought we ran the ball decent early on. And then we just gave up some op- wide open plays. And, uh, you know, we've addressed it uh, thoroughly. I-, I think we hopefully put a better plan together. But, uh, you know, they had some guys running open and catching touchdowns with being untouched, and that can't happen in college football. All right, we're going to go to the phone lines. Don is calling in from Indianapolis. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, good evening, Coach. Uh, I got two questions for you. With the strong win that you had on Saturday, did that affect any of your play calling, or would you have called the uh, same play regardless? And my second question is, have you thought about maybe doing a dual quarterback with Austin Burt and, and uh, O'Connell? Thank you. Yeah, those are all good questions. Yes, uh, you know, we had uh, wanted to be somewhat cautious uh, with the wind, and uh, we thought we were early on. We tried to throw a, an out cut uh, after they scored the first touchdown. They went to cover two on us, so we had a, a whole shot down the middle, and Aiden, in my opinion, forced it too fast and too early, and our receiver wasn't ready to catch it, and it just barely went over his hands. It was intercepted, and they scored two plays later, so now it's 14 to nothing. And then uh, we're driving again uh, in the second quarter and get down around the, I don't know, 10 or 15-yard line, throw a a check down that happened to just go over the running back's head and right into the linebacker's arms and for another interception. So it was just some small things there. Um, we always have a, a package for the other quarterbacks uh, to run uh, that includes some quarterback run plays and some zone reads and some things to change things up. We used it last year on them very effectively. Uh, we tried to use it the next game that following year, and it wasn't as effective. Uh, but uh, we had it ready. We just decided not to go with it. And then once we got down um, – you know, it was it was. Then we did have to throw the ball a little more than we wanted to. So it just uh, was a not a good day for us, and it's something we got to learn from. Jeff, I think the ironic thing about Saturday's game and the wind, the wind was coming out of the south at about 20 to 25 sustained. Yet all of the scoring, except for three points, happened against the wind. And sometimes you hear from people, it, it may be a little bit easier to throw against the wind than with the wind. You've had experience on, in that situation as a quarterback. What did you find? And a windy lay like that. Well, that is how it played out. You know, both of our interceptions were going with the wind, and both were overthrown. And uh, it just – and, you know, there were times on the, the field I, I almost blow, blew over uh, when it gusted. So it, it was uh, a little tricky, and uh, we just got to do a better job. And, uh, unfortunately, that hasn't uh, been something that uh, we've excelled at. <clears throat> but we got to work at it, and, uh, you know, we have, and, and uh, we're going to – continue to grind away and hopefully uh, you know, get better at uh, playing in those elements. You had mentioned last week that Iowa's offense was very efficient in their win over Northwestern, and it seems like they have found their stride here in the last couple of weeks. I was really impressed with their freshman running back, and Petrus made the throws he had to make on Saturday to keep their offense going. They did. you got to give them a lot of credit. They executed, came ready to play, uh, did the small things in order to win, and, uh, and they beat us. So, um, you know, credit goes to them. Um, like I said, I, I think we can play better and uh, not allow, you know, I think every one of their touchdowns, I don't know if anybody touched uh, the defender, excuse me, the runner or the, the receiver, and we can do better than that. And I just think that uh, we need to put a better plan together and just work hard at it and get our guys understanding exactly what the calls are and how to execute. And, uh, you know, we'll be tested this week, and we'll see how we stack up. All right, we're coming to you from Walk-Ons in West Lafayette, back with more of the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Second down and one at the 45, play action. Here's O'Connell, winds up, sideline, open receiver. Got him at the 25. And he's just a true freshman. First and 15. O'Connell guns it over the middle, and it's caught by Charlie Jones. Chuck Sizzle. Does it again. Downing next to O'Connell in the backfield. Tracy in motion. O'Connell with time. Touchdown, Purdue. And Zaki Wheatley takes a bit of a bad angle, and there's Charlie Jones. O'Connell over the middle. Jones with another catch. Charlie Jones. In motion. 
quickly to Charlie Jones. Scampers to the outside, heading to the pylon. Diving for a touchdown. And make a play on the ball. O'Connell to throw again. Sets his feet, long ball. Jones wide open. Touchdown. He's confident. He's taking his time. Third and five. Over the middle, Jones, bullseye. Charlie Jones wrapped up and dropped there. Ball with his hands, turn and get upfield immediately. Going quickly. Seeing them to communicate and beat, get them on their heels. On third and four, towards the end zone. That's in for six. Touchdown, Charlie Jones. Throw it to a big body. Second down, Burton looking for an end zone. And it's bubbled and caught for a touchdown. Actually translates in the pocket. Do two out of two on third down. This is third and 12. They go back to Jones. Oh. A back shoulder catch. O'Connell on the slant. Throws a dart. Jones keeps his feet. Jones to the end zone. Touchdown, Purdue. O'Connell will throw. And that's oh. Colin Jones. Touchdown, Purdue. O'Connell hoist one. Jones. Has it pop around? I think he made an incredible catch. Makers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Warman Automotive Group. Boiler up and hammer down. Watching in tonight, we have uh, David from Cumberland, Indiana, Tim from Fort Wayne, Tim Taggart from F Wolf Lake, Indiana, our friend Ira from Swamico, Wisconsin, and Jane Jones as she's watching from Orlando in the middle of Tropical Storm Nicole. So Jane stays safe down there. Uh, Josh has a question. I Illinois, and we've seen some good defenses here, Wisconsin and Iowa. We're going to see maybe the best of the best on Saturday. With uh, Illinois having a stingy run defense, is there still a plan to get some running game going, especially with uh, Devin Mockaby? <laughs> well, we're working hard at it. Uh, as you watch film on them, uh, I give them a lot of credit. Uh, to be ranked number one in the country in, 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 in a lot of defensive categories, uh, you're doing a lot of really good things. And uh, they've played good opponents, uh, and they've still found a way to win and, and be dominant on defense. So it is going to be tough to get run yards, but we've got to figure out a way. And, yes, uh, we need to give Maccabee his touches, and other guys are touches. I think we didn't get Payne Durham the ball enough the last game. And even though we tried a little bit, we need to do a better job of, of just making sure it happens. So I just think, without question, um, our main playmakers need to touch the ball enough, but we need multiple guys to do that, and we need to have a good plan ready to go. Speaking of Payne Durham, he was named one of nine semifinalists earlier this week for the uh, Mackey Award as the nation's top tight end. And, you know, a guy that came in as a, basically a high school lacrosse player has made a pretty good career for himself at Purdue. Well, we're really proud of Payne. He's really uh, been a great leader, uh, super competitor, tremendous teammate. He's liked by everybody on the team. Got a great personality, uh, carries it well, uh, and really wants to win. So he, he does his part. He's played a lot of really good football for us. He plays when he's injured. He plays when he's hurt. He's tough, toughing things out. He's made some great plays for us throughout the years. And, uh, you know, we want to try to send him out with a bang. And, uh, you know, it's important that we follow that leadership and uh, the others uh, chime in. Uh, we had a spirited practice today where it was good and chippy and guys were into it. And that's what it's going to take. And if we want to beat a – very talented, confident Illinois team is guys that are willing to, to lay it on the line and go out there and compete for the win. Well, the good news, Jeff, you got a little bit accustomed to the wind last week, and it's going to be, it won't be quite as windy on Saturday, but it's going to be about 30 degrees colder than last week. They're calling right now for highs of about 35 and winds anywhere from 10 to 20 miles an hour. And again, that's, that's November weather in the Big Ten. Yeah, without question, that's how it's going to be the rest of the way, and, uh, you know, it can't be a factor for us. We got to, you know, concentrate and uh, stay locked in, do the small things to help us win. Uh, let's talk about that Illinois team because last year they changed up what they did a little bit defensively in the game they played against you. And then, uh, you know, you had to go down to the wire to win that game 13 to nine. What do they do defensively that makes them so difficult to, to move the ball against? Well, they're really committed uh, to stopping the run and loading the box and uh, playing a lot of aggressive man coverage where in the secondary they're they're not pressing you, but they're off and they're catching you at a certain depth and making you really kind of figure out a way to run by them without getting their hands on you. Uh, but uh, they went to a what's kind of a 5-1 package where they have five linemen in the game up on the line of scrimmage and, and one linebacker. Uh, and if you put an extra tight end or two, then there will be extra linebackers in there. And uh, with that, uh, they'll mix occasionally in a disguise of a uh, you know, cover two or zone coverage, but man, they don't, they don't, they don't show it. 
uh, until after the ball snapped, and that's uncommon uh, in, in football. Normally, people will tip their hand a little bit, uh, and they're really good at it, and I think they did. And last year was the first time they brought out some of that against us. By any film we saw, I went back and watched games before us because I'm like, they haven't shown this. And then afterwards, they did a good job with it. This, this year, they've taken it to a new level. They're playing it almost exclusively. Uh, they're committed to it. They understand it. They're getting after the quarterback. They're stopping the run. They're, they're hitting people, and they're aggressive in their approach. And I think it's really helped them play with a lot of confidence and create turnovers and create stops. You mentioned the fact that they bring a lot of guys up to the line of scrimmage and in the box, and not, not only does that make it difficult to run the ball, but they put great pass pressure on. You don't really have a lot of time back there in the pocket to find somebody down the field. Well, and that's going to be the key uh, is you, you've got to just figure out a way to run the ball some and, and get some yards, and it's not going to be easy. And then you've got to figure out a way to you know, protect long enough if you need to chuck it up the field, but also – Get the ball out quickly uh, so your guys can make plays. So it presents challenges, and we've watched it a ton. Uh, but we've got to go out and execute and really play fast and physical. I thought, uh, you know, we were a little tentative the last game, but we've got to play fast and physical and play to win. All right, we'll be back with more. It's the Jeff Brom Show here from Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. We're presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open! Touchdown, Seth Morales! Holy Toledo! Steps away, Coleman football! For nearly a century, ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about them Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Toughest place in the Big Ten to come get a victory. You ask any player who's played here. Uh, Mackey is the loudest gym I've ever been in. Really, it's ridiculous. Like you just, you can't hear anything. Mackey Arena, it's, it's literally the loudest place uh, I've ever been in my life. Yeah, I, I'll take that to the grave. Mackey Arena is the hardest place to play. What can you say about this environment? The intro alone got me off my seat. This place could absolutely blow its top. This is the one venue where they have to have more of a read and react offense. This, this atmosphere is as good as there is in America. Maybe the best I've ever been in rivals anything I've ever seen. And the paint crew on both sides enjoy what should be the best atmosphere you will see. Welcome back to the Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. Everyone needs a little playing time, and we were talking during the break. Uh, you really had to tip your hat to the Hawkeyes punter last week, Tory Taylor, who's really one of the best punters in the country. What he did against the wind at ross Aid was phenomenal. I, I saw Charlie Jones look at a ball go over his head, and he couldn't believe how, how hard that ball was struck. Well, he's really talented, and, uh, you know, he drove some through the wind uh, like I've never seen kick before. So, you know, as much as, you know, I don't really watch the punter uh, drastically and, and spend a whole lot of time on it, man, he could kick the ball, and he was consistent, and uh, he had a lot of punch. You know, back to the fighting Illini, one of the guys that you really have to be concerned about on their offensive side is the nation's leading rusher, Chase Brown. And, and I think watching him play, the most impressive thing is the fact that he's getting probably 30 to 40 carries a game, and he's just as fresh, it seems, on the last one as he is on the first one. Well, I'll tell you what, he runs hard. He's durable. Uh, he's really talented. Uh, he's got good hands out of the backfield. Uh, their offensive line's really done a good job. They have a great system that uh, you know has a quarterback that runs around a little bit and manages that and keeps a few people honest. But uh, you know, between the, the defensive play and the sound running game, uh, they're just really performing very well. And... Uh, you know, Chase has played a lot of football, and he's somebody that you just got to figure out a way to contain him. 
Uh, and his twin brother, Sidney, is really kind of the key of their defense back there playing at the safety position. And he, he does a great job, it seems like, getting their guys into position at all times. They definitely understand the package. Uh, their approach is aggressive. Uh, they play downhill. They're on the attack. They, they challenge each other to make plays, and they've done it very well this year. You mentioned Illinois' quarterback, Tommy DeVito, came as a transfer from Syracuse, and he's a guy that takes care of the football. He's only thrown two interceptions all season, so they've done a really nice job running the ball, playing great defense, and not turning it over. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Well, it is, and you're going to win football games uh, that way. So that's one thing that... Uh, when we've had some really good games and we've had some good wins, we have found a way to flip that script, which means uh, we take care of the football. Uh, we sustain drives and take it in for points. We find ways to get stops on defense and turnovers, and that's just the name of the game. So we're going to have to figure it out, and uh, this team has proven themselves uh, up to this point, and uh, we've got to go into their house and find a way to bring back the trophy. You mentioned earlier this week, Jeff, that um, you've got to learn as, as a team how to come from behind because you're not always going to be ahead. And when you get against a team like an Illinois or a Wisconsin or an Iowa that plays great defense, you've got to find a way to manufacture some offense. And one of the ways you do that is big plays. And I, I think that's probably the one thing that's been lacking, especially the last couple of games, is just the inability to hit those big plays. You are correct. And uh, it's important to, to find a way to do that. And, um, you know, we have to just – Really make sure that no matter what the score is early on, we've got to keep playing and we've got to be aggressive and uh, guys got to step up and they got to just, you know, play their, their butt off. I just think sometimes uh, it's, it's natural for some people to lose some confidence and some belief and uh, you can't allow that to happen. And uh, we as coaches cannot, cannot allow that to happen. So we've got to have a bounce to our step. Uh, we've got to come to the game, you know, ready to go for the win, uh, willing to compete uh, the entire game and laid out there. And I just think our guys need to play looser and freer and, uh, and, and challenge themselves to raise their level of play. Going back just uh, one more time to the game last Saturday. Again, we, I think we have some people here from the ross Aid Brigade, and I thought, again, the students came out on, on a really blustery day. I thought the fans in general, a lot of them hung through to the bitter end, and, and you really got to be happy with the way your team's been supported at ross Aid this year. Well, without question, that's a bright spot. Uh, the ross Aid Brigade is, is out in full force. Uh, they get there early. Uh, they do their part, and they're committed to supporting the football team and uh, and all uh, you know the, the sports program. So uh, it definitely makes our players feel good. Uh, we understand that hey, we we got to do our part, and it's not going to be easy. We're the ones that got to put in a really a, a lot of hard work and lay it out there on the line. And our guys got to be willing to handle adversity when things aren't going well, and and listen to criticism when when that happens, and not lose confidence, and understand that's the nature of the game. And uh, you know, if you, if you hang in there and, and you play tough and you're willing to, you know, stick through it, good things will happen. But you just can't give in. Uh, and we want our players to understand that there's a lot of season left to play and we want to go try to win this game. Uh, you're at the point in the season where basically the guys that you're going to play this year have played. Uh, you're probably not going to bring too many people, if anybody, out of mothballs. How do you keep those guys that are not getting a lot of playing time sharp and get them some reps when you're trying to prepare for these big games week after week? Well... You know, we, we practice a lot during the week, and those young guys get reps to a certain degree, maybe not running exactly our plays uh, normally, but they're going against the, the one defense or the one offense. And, uh, you know, we watch that film, and we tell them all the time, we're going to judge how you're playing, how hard you're playing, are you making plays. We want you to, to not take the week off. It's, it's got to be something where you're challenging yourself to get ready. You know, I think it's just got to – take some personal pride and the, and the ability to want to be a great player and to try to be ready when your number's called. Because at any point uh, this year, just like last year, uh, you know, we had to go to the bowl game and play a lot of new guys. And, you know, to step up and to find a way to beat a really good Tennessee team, those guys just, you know, played loose and, and free, and we were able to make some plays. So it's just a, you never know when your, your number's going to get called, just like a backup quarterback, but you have to prepare yourself to get ready to go. All right, we're coming to you from Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. When we come back, we'll be talking with Lawrence Johnson. It's the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. At the 48, Clifford over the middle, high and picked. Jefferson with room. Can he get a block? Chris Jefferson still on the move with a lane. Jefferson. Touchdown, Purdue! And just airmails him. 
I mean, this this ball is just way over his head. Tinsley can't even jump up there and try to bat it down or do anything. He can't try to disrupt Jefferson, and Jefferson catches it almost like a punt. Steps in front, but then he starts getting the blocking. And On second and eight, four receivers in the pattern. Screws is under heat. He's buried. Dropped quickly by Jack Sullivan. Is in the backfield with Screws. Gavin pumps it. Protection breaking down. Throws one into traffic, deflected and picked off. Intercepted. Jamari Brown. Screws. Looks for that pass. It's picked off. Intercepted. And this time, Cam Allen will work his way all the way. Touchdown. No holding, no DPI. On uh, third and goal, Perry hit into traffic, deflected and intercepted. Here comes Jefferson again. Jefferson did this against Penn State. Jefferson still up and wrapped up at the 35-yard line. Morgan fakes it to Potts. Here's the pressure from Sullivan, who gets his hand on the pass. It's tipped and it's picked off by the Boilermakers. Morgan, end zone. Intercepted off the hands of Brown Stevens and into a waiting Cam Allen's hands. Michael Brown Stevens dropped a touchdown. Cam Allen picks it off, and Purdue's got it at the 20. Edge pressure, Morgan intercepted. Picked off by Cam Allen, his second of the day. He's still going. Third and six. Tunga Vailoa, another high snap, really. And intercepted. Picked off by Corey Trice. Brings it across midfield. There's a flag at the near side. Trice looking to take it back. And Tunga Vailoa goes down in the backfield. Three timeouts, 5.41 to go until halftime. We fake it to Grant. Thompson rolling. Now throwing. It's picked off on the return. Clyde Washington. Thompson picks up six. Nebraska moves the chains down seven. Now here's the chance. And in the coverage, incomplete. Incomplete. It's time for the Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Raheem Mostert scored a touchdown for the Miami Dolphins last week. Uh, in their uh, win, he had 26 yards rushing on the day as well. Rondale Moore, eight catches for 69 yards for the Arizona Cardinals in their loss to Seattle. On the defensive side, Juwan Bentley with the Patriots, five solos and a sack in the win over the Colts. Derek Barnes had a big game for the Lions in their win over Green Bay, 12 tackles, including four solos. He also had a sack on Aaron Rodgers in that game. And Marcus Bailey with the Cincinnati Bengals, six tackles, including four solos in the win over Carolina, and we'll just segue into our defensive player this week, Lawrence Johnson, who is a fifth-year senior from Fort Wayne, actually a Purdue graduate. Yes, sir. And I know that was very important to not only to you, but your mom, to come here and play football, but also get a great education, and I think you've been able to check both those boxes. Yeah, that's something that uh, she preached to us as starting up young, and she was always about education, and she liked for us to play sports, but she was big on education, so it was big for me to come here and um, come to this um, this university and graduate from here for me and my family. And you've also uh, gotten the job done in the classroom, a three-time academic All-Big Ten selection, so congratulations yes, on that. Thank you. Congratulations. That's worth a round of applause. Uh, congratulations also. A, a one-and-a-half sacks last week against the Iowa Hawkeyes. You've been close a few times this year, but it was finally good to see you get to that quarterback a couple of times. Yeah, um, we just, you know, try to pressure the quarterback as much as possible, and um, I just, you know, tried my best to get there and, and hope he didn't throw the ball. So, You've got a lot more depth on your defensive line than you've had in past years, and I think that's allowed you to stay fresh throughout the season and really empty your tank. Talk about, from your standpoint, maybe getting fewer snaps but being able to be more productive with those snaps. Uh, yeah, see, um, when I first got here, we didn't have this much depth at this position, so we had a lot of guys taking a lot of snaps, and, and it didn't look too good on film. So 
with the help that I have here and the help that we have on the D-line, you know, my reps, I get maybe like 30 snaps a game. So it gives me a chance to, every time I go out there, give it 100% because I know I got somebody who's coming in and, and giving it their all too. It's been great too to see a healthy Lawrence Johnson on the field because you had not just one, but two off-season surgeries on your hip and your shoulder. How do you rehab both of those in the span of an off-season to get ready for the year? Uh, it, was, it was hard, you know, um, a lot of time in the training room come in two or three times a day, you know, get different treatments. And um, one day we'll focus on my shoulder more, one day we'll focus on my hip more. So it was, it was a work in progress, and I had a lot of support from my teammates, my family, the coaching staff. And um, it was mainly the players that, that kept me in it, and, and, and their support kept me through it. Coming here from Fort Wayne Snyder, what led you to become a Boilermaker those five years ago, which seems like forever, doesn't it? No. It, it, uh, really? It's it, gone pretty it, fast yeah, for it's you. It's quick. It's like a blink of an <laughs> eye. And, um, it was somewhere I just wanted to come here. I knew the academics here were great. Uh, a lot of people from back home talk about Purdue and, and their academic programs. And um, I wanted to stay somewhere that was close enough for my family to travel and see me anytime they wanted to. So um, it was a perfect fit here. We've talked with the coach about the weather conditions last week. I'm just wondering from a lineman's perspective, we know when they try to run and throw the ball and kick it uh, that it's a little bit different. Do you feel a 50-mile-an-hour gust when you're down in a stance on the defensive line? Uh, yeah, yeah. When you get down in a stance, it's like going up your back. And, and sometimes it gives you chills, but as the game goes on, you just kind of like get used to it. Well, and I don't think the cold is going to bother you this week either because I'm imagining in Fort Wayne growing up, you played a few Friday night games on a November night that was a little bit chilly. A lot of chilly. Yeah. I played in a couple <laughs> blizzards myself in high school. Really? So I'm, I'm a little bit used to the cold. Uh, did you win those games in the blizzard? You probably remember the, the, the actual conditions maybe more than the games themselves. Yeah, some, one game I remember it was a total blizzard in Westfield, and, and, and we didn't get that win in high school. So. Uh, well. You know, it probably makes things a little bit easier, though, if you're a defensive lineman and you know they can't throw, or throw the ball. It's just a tee, let's tee back and, and, and get in that running yeah. backfield and, yeah, and see if we can get some guys for loss. And that's when we got to stop the run. All right, let's talk about what's left on the season. You've only got three games left, one home game. Have you gone through visually in, in your mind what it's going to be like on senior day here in, in, a, in a week or so when you run through that tunnel for the last time? Uh, there would be a lot of emotions for me. Um, you know, I'm going to have all my family there, some of my close friends. And it it will just be hard that, um, you know, because I, I love playing football here. And it's been great here. So, but, you know, it's going to be time to move on to the next chapter of my life. So it's going to be a, a bittersweet day. Well, we've loved having you here. Lawrence, congratulations on your career. And let's see if we can go out with a few wins here in the month of November. Yes, sir. Thank all right, you so Lawrence much. Johnson joining us. When we come back, we'll hear from offensive lineman Marcus Bowe. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Tracy in motion, O'Connell with time. Touchdown, Purdue! Jones in motion. Quickly to Charlie Jones, scampers to the outside, heading to the pylon! The game now. O'Connell looking over the middle, beautiful throw, finds his man, touchdown! Flats, so he can cut off the safety like that and make a play on the ball. O'Connell to throw again, sets his feet, long ball, Jones wide open, touchdown! Ball with his hands, turn and get upfield immediately. Going quickly. He's cutting after he starts with inside the tackle box. O'Connell, what a drive that he has engineered, going for the corner of the end zone, it's a touchdown for Up wise today's game it just makes that much more sense this ends up being an angle route from your tight end I haven't seen 87 yet tonight third and goal empty backfield O'Connell over the middle zips it towards the back of the end zone that's caught for a touchdown by TJ Sheffield O'Connell on the slant throws a dart Jones keeps his feet Jones to the end zone touchdown Purdue important third down here and it's caught Sheffield. Sheffield spins free. Sheffield dives. Touchdown, Purdue. <laughs> O'Connell will throw. And that's caught by Jones. Touchdown, Purdue. What a pass. 
Connell on a roll now, looking back to his left. The tight end throw back to Payne Durham for the touchdown. Well executed. Welcome back to the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Joined on the program now by Marcus Bow, a redshirt freshman from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, which is just outside Milwaukee. Yes, sir. Uh, how many people and how many times has your name been mispronounced and it is pronounced a, or spelled M-B-O-W? Yes, sir. <laughs> the M is silent. How many ways have you heard that pronounced over the years? I can tell you that I've never heard it right more than once. Okay. Well, hopefully we got it right, right? It oh, is Marcus sure. Bell. Okay. For sure. Uh, you were a basketball player in, in, as well as football, and I've heard that you used to be able to dunk a basketball pretty well. Can you still get up there and dunk it in, you, sure in, your, in your advancing age? I'm sure I can. You know, I haven't <laughs> been trying because Coach Brown told me I shouldn't be playing basketball during the season. So. And Coach Brown, is, Coach is always right. You know always. that, right? <laughs> uh, I also saw that a lot of your fellow uh, linemen shaved their heads this year in preseason camp, and you <laughs> held out. And I congratulate you for that decision because you <laughs> had a pretty good head of hair. I think I appreciate you for that, but, yeah, my hair wasn't coming off. I I couldn't do that. I couldn't go bald. Uh, talk about your decision to come down. It's about a three, three and a half hour drive from Milwaukee. What brought you to become a Boilermaker? Well, you know, I had some rough patches in my uh, commitment process. I was originally committed to another school, and then I had to reopen my commitment. And then I had a good connection with the coaches here for a while. I knew some players that were already here. So I thought, you know, why not a better place to get my education and you know, better myself as a person and a football player at Purdue. You got a little bit of a taste last year, got into a few games as a true freshman. How much did that help you as you got ready for your redshirt season? Uh, it helped me a lot. It helped me, you know, learn how the speed of the game is and mature a little bit in football, but it also gave me some more hunger in the offseason, you know, to work a lot harder and have a better season, you know, coming up. I'm glad you mentioned the word hunger because I understand your <laughs> nickname is the Big Lunch. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, where did that come from? Everybody in the locker room just seeing me eat all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. No, you I can throw it down. But you said you've also got another nickname that you're working on, right? Yeah. Uh, recently, I've been hearing Mick Bow from everybody. Because you have been doing NIL deals with a certain fast food product that has arches and is a processed rib uh, sandwich. Yeah. Can't really say the name, but you kind of get to put two and two together. Sure. It has to be fun, though, right now to be a college athlete, to be able to, to go out and find these kinds of deals and, and try to you know, make a little extra money, also get your name out there a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. It's an amazing opportunity for all of our athletes. Uh, talk about the versatility, Marcus, of this offensive line, because really, really, basically there are six guys that, that are playing in there, but mm -hmm. there are times we see you on the right side, the left side, where you're playing all over. How difficult is it to make those those switches from from series to series. I agree. Uh, it's it's all right. I mean, once you keep doing it over and over and over, it kind of gets easy and easy. But at first, it's kind of it's kind of rough. You know, you got to learn each play and you you know back and forth. But otherwise, as time goes on and you start to build chemistry with the guys, it starts to get easy and things just flow. We've also seen you line up a couple of times in the fullback position, and you yes, go in motion, and I think your job is just hit somebody really, really hard down around the goal line. 100%. That's all, that's you, all I want to do. You gotta, <laughs> do. When you're in motion now, are you looking out of the corner of your eye to see, all right, got to make sure I find this guy first before I can hit him. Yeah, more partially. It's just run full speed, and whoever shows up is getting hit. You know what I mean? I understand. <laughs> uh, let's talk about, well, first of all, what was it like going against the guys like Lawrence Johnson and Branson Dean and some of these guys? I mean, you've got a really deep, talented defensive line. It has 100%. to sharpen your, your sword a little bit during practice 100%, every day. 100%. Since, uh, since my first days here, you know, going against great players from day one, George Karloftis, you know, pro D linemen that are playing in the NFL now, and then future NFL D linemen that we have, they're it's just been great for me and both sides just learning from each other and getting better. All right, Coach mentioned in one of the earlier segments, still a lot of football to play. I mean, you've got a quarter of the regular season still to go, even though it's compressed basically into a two-week period. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to be excited to get on the field and play a top 25 team and a chance to really make a statement on Saturday in Champaign. For sure, very excited. You know, our team has been having a good week of practice so far, but morale is high. We're, you know, looking forward and ready to go. 
Well, Marcus, congratulations on the big leaps from year one to year two. Can't wait to see what's in store for year three and stay healthy the rest of the way. Appreciate it. All right, Marcus, boy, join us. We're going to have the head coach when we come back. It's the Jeff Brown Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Second down and one at the 45. Play action. Here's O'Connell. Winds up. Sideline. Open receiver. Got him at the 25. And he's just a true freshman. First and 15, O'Connell guns it over the middle, and it's caught by Charlie Jones. Chuck Sizzle does it again. Downing next to O'Connell in the backfield. Tracy in motion. O'Connell with time. Touchdown, Purdue. And Zaki Wheatley takes a bit of a bad angle, and there's Charlie Jones. O'Connell. Over the middle, Jones with another catch. Charlie Jones is in motion. Quickly to Charlie Jones, scampers to the outside, heading to the pylon. Diving for a touchdown. And make a play on the ball. <laughs> O'Connell to throw again, sets his feet, long ball. Jones wide open, touchdown. He's confident, he's taking his time. Third and five, over the middle, Jones, bullseye. Charlie Jones wrapped up and dropped there. Ball with his hands, turn and get upfield immediately. Going quickly. Seeing them to communicate and beat, get them on their heels. On third and four, towards the end zone. That's in for six. Touchdown, Charlie Jones. Throw it to a big body. On second down, Burton looking for the end zone. And it's bubbled and caught for a touchdown. He translates in the pocket. New two out of two on third down. This is third and 12. They go back to oh. Jones. It's a back shoulder catch. O'Connell on the slant. Throws a dart. Jones keeps his feet. Jones to the end zone. Touchdown, Purdue. O'Connell will throw. And that's caught by Jones. Touchdown, Purdue. O'Connell hoists one. Jones has it bop around. I think he made an incredible catch. Your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Warman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. Purdue and Illinois, Saturday noon Eastern time from uh, Memorial Stadium in Champaign. Our broadcast starts at 11. You can join us on the Purdue Athletics site on Facebook. Uh, we'll have, do a Facebook Live segment at 1030 Eastern time on Saturday morning and get you ready for a kickoff. Uh, we mentioned earlier, Jeff, that Payne Durham is a, a semifinalist for the Mackey Award. Aiden O'Connell was named a semifinalist this week for the Burlesworth uh, Trophy, and that, that goes to the player who came in as a walk-on and is the most outstanding player in America. And for the people that don't know the story, Brandon Burlesworth was a, a player at the University of Arkansas, a lineman, walked onto the team, became a first-round draft choice of the Indianapolis Colts in 1999, and then two weeks after he was drafted, he was killed in an automobile accident. And so there's a trophy now that's named after him. And, you know, I know Aiden has not had his best games, and he, he's ready to try to turn the page here the next couple of uh, games. But you still have to look back on his career, and it's really unbelievable where he's come from to where he is today. Without question, from his starting point to where he uh, is now is, is miraculous. And it's a credit to him, uh, his upbringing, his work ethic, his belief in himself, his faith, um, you know, came in as just a walk-on that really we didn't know a whole lot about, just kind of a, a friend of mine who helps train quarterbacks, uh, brought him to my attention, brought him down, and luckily he decided to come. Didn't have a whole lot else going on and uh, came and really just fit in well with the team. He was just a really good person. But, you know, he was bright and, uh, you know, threw okay and, you know, just, you know, he never really saw uh, – what was getting ready to happen mm -hmm. and he just kind of continued to work and work and work and it got a little better and a little better he knows a little bit more every year and you're like man this, this guy's gotten a little bit better and then even when we had to put him in a game we had three quarterbacks go down and, and it was down to him and uh he stepped in and helped us win and uh, that's just uh a credit to you know like i said to everything he's put into it uh, so we're proud of him like everybody everybody uh can can do a better job uh he knows that in order for us to win uh, you know, we need him to play well and to be a big factor, and he cares, and uh, he tries to lead, and, uh, you know, that's all you can ask for. So I know he's going to continue to grind through this, and uh, 
uh, give us his best shot, and uh, we're very proud and, and happy that he's on our team. Aiden's also a semifinalist for the Werfel Trophy, which is given to the player who does the most off-field activities in Special Olympics. Uh, uh, he's been involved a couple of mission trips to Africa. He's, he's everything you want in a student athlete, and we're hoping he has a great finish to his uh, season. You know, we don't talk a lot during the season because we can't talk spe specifics, but recruiting is right around the corner because you've got to sign a new class here in about six weeks. Uh, in general, are you happy with, w with the way things are going, and uh, what kinds of things do you look for both in the high school ranks and now in the portal going forward? You know, recruiting uh, is a constant that has to happen, and... Um you know, we're pretty, we, we, we're pretty far along in our high school recruits for this upcoming class and really kind of somewhat shut that down uh, a little while ago. Not that things can change. They can. But, um, you know, we feel good about the young men we have coming in that uh, we think will be here. And now it's about, you know, making sure that we address the roster moving forward and uh, who's not going to be here next year and maybe who hasn't performed as well as we would like or maybe who has stepped up and performed well. And what are we going to need? And uh, every year you got to do that. And uh, with the transfer portal and uh, junior college prospects and all those things, there's numerous people out there that are wanting a, a new opportunity uh, to prove themselves. And uh, you've got to constantly evaluate it and look into it and uh, try to get to know the, that person a little bit and see if he really is going to fit and is he really hungry. And uh, all those things matter. And, and you can't miss. Like, we, we have to bring in young men that are coming in play and, and play right away and help us uh, and that's just so important I mean it's so competitive now across the board that you just got to continue to coach your your rear end off but at the same time you know bring in the, the best talent you have that uh, fits the needs on your team and then continue to build the team from there and it's just a everyday constant process and you've got to be committed uh, to that and uh, not only myself but all of our coaches do. And the, I think the other uh, thing that factors into this, and it has the last couple of years with the COVID, you've got players who have an extra year of opportunity, and you have to decide, and they have to decide whether to exercise those extra years. And that makes it a little more challenging because there are number limits on scholarships of 85 every year, and uh, when you're not for sure who really is a senior and who's not because they have the ability to come back and play, it, it, it challenges you to have plans ready in case either happens, and when the season's over, sit down with those young men and kind of see where they're at. But at that, at that point, uh, you know, it's late in the process. We, we have to be recruiting young men before that. So it's just a challenge of managing those numbers and but making sure that uh, you don't fall short. All right, final segment of the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group is coming up on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open! Got him! Touchdown, Purdue! Seth Morales! Holy Toledo! Thomas steps away, Coleman fumble! For nearly a century, ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Placing in the Big Ten to come get a victory. You ask any player who's played here. Uh, Mackey is the loudest gym I've ever been in. Really, it's ridiculous. Like you just, you can't hear anything. Mackey Arena is it's literally the loudest place uh, I've ever been in my life. You know, I'll, I'll take that to the grave. Mackey Arena is the hardest place to play. What can you say about this environment? The intro alone got me off my seat. This place could absolutely blow its top. This is the one venue where they have to have more of a read and react offense. This, this atmosphere is as good as there is in America. 
maybe the best I've ever been in. Rivals anything I've ever seen. And the paint crew on both sides enjoy what should be the best atmosphere you will see. Boilermakers and Fighting Illini coming up this Saturday. The Purdue's last home game against Northwestern on November 19th. Do not have a start time on that one yet. We'll get that one sometime either Saturday or Sunday. One of the things we found out earlier this week, Jeff, or earlier this year, and I think it's something we've always known, you, you come back from the Syracuse game, you're one and two, and everybody's a little bit down, and then you roll off four straight wins. And we know that the world in college football can change a whole lot in a three-and-a-half-hour span on a Saturday. Well, and that's what makes it challenging is you never know when these runs are going to happen, but you've got to just continue to grind through it. You've got to uh, still work hard when you're winning. I mean, you've got to find a way to not pat yourself on the back and stay grinded away. And then when you're losing, you've got to be able to just be tough enough to withstand uh, some adversity and understand that uh, you know, you just got to continue to fix the mistakes and find ways to get things corrected and put your players in the best position to succeed and not put it off on somebody else. So I just think it's important as a head coach and as coach, we take the blame. We say, okay, what can we do better to help these young men? And then we approach it in a, in a constructive criticism way of, hey, this is what we, I think, need to do, and let's go, let's go about it and work at it. And I just think we've been making some mistakes each and every week here lately, and we've got to find a way to eliminate those uh, and really come out and play better. All right, as you get ready for this Illinois game, uh, we got about a minute left. Some of the keys, what do you have to do well on Saturday to come out with a win against the Illini and keep that Cannon trophy? Well, coming out with some emotion and passion and energy is going to be very important. And uh, this team is playing as confident. They're good. They're talented. They played very well. So we just got to come in in there and battle and uh, you know, be willing to fight, uh, stick together, uh, eliminate uh, as many mistakes as we can, tackle better, guard, uh, you know, finish plays, play as fast as we can. Uh, and compete, and I just think that's all you can ask, but you, that has to happen. Like Everyone has to be committed to doing that and understand that's what it's going to take in order to win. Uh, trophy games are always fun, too. It doesn't matter when you're playing your family for the last chicken wing or whatever you're playing. You put something up at stake, it makes it just a little bit spicier. Well, you know, there's a lot of pride in, in this uh, rivalry, and we need to understand uh, that there's, there's something riding on this, and we need to figure out a way to, uh, to get that trophy and, and, uh, and to have it with us. Well, I know the Boilermaker fans will be out in force, uh, hopefully at the game on Saturday, and if not, watching and listening and getting ready for their last chance at home one more time to honor these seniors at ross Aid Stadium a week from Saturday. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, Jeff, good luck this week against the Illini. The Boilermakers and the Fighting Illini kicking off at noon Eastern time on Saturday. Our Facebook Live segment will come out at 1030. Kelly Kitchell and Pete Quinn will join me on that one. I say Pete Quinn. Now, his daughter is actually due on uh, Saturday, so we're not sure if Pete's going to be with us or not. If he isn't, then Kelly Kitchell will come up from the sidelines, and he'll take care of things up there. Uh, and then the, the Boilermakers will be home against Northwestern for Senior Day and finish up the season two weeks from Saturday for the Old Oak and Bucket Battle against Indiana. No start time for either of those final two games yet. Our engineer tonight, Wes Scott, our producer, Jacob Smith. Thanks to, video, uh, to Hunter Massengill for producing our video tonight for both Facebook and Twitter. Again, we're back here next Wednesday night at 6.05 for our next edition of the Jeff Brown Show. For Lawrence Johnson and for Marcus Bowe and for the head coach, this is Tim Newton. Thanks for tuning in tonight. We'll talk to you next week here from Walk-Ons. Good night, everybody.